Okay. Who the fuck let Satoru the light skin Gojo out of the box, man? <laughs> that shit ain't gonna age well. Bro, this motherfucker spawned back with all the smoke high out of his mind. Like, he just ain't in the same world as us anymore. Brody never felt this kind of disrespect since he got that dog shit slapped out of him by the shawty he tried to save. Ouch, what the hell, man? My wrists have never failed me like this before, dog. I think this one is broken, bro. Ah, ha, ha. Can you shut up? Yeah, after being rejected like that, homie completely done lost his mind. Like, this man ain't about to get done did twice floating in the air like he just got the soul sucked out of him by a bad bitch. Homeboy ascended reality, still thinking back to that one shot he couldn't bag. And Toji is out there stretching his slutty ass body like he about to do yak shit to the only man with blue eyes in the whole of Japan. Like you know shit is messy when we have Beethoven's last symphony playing in the background while he risking up the viewers mid fight against one of the strongest motherfuckers in the whole verse. If we go back to the start of this whole situation, we have our second in command ghetto out there hoe hunting but it looks like Gojo already swept the streets cause the only thing that is left is this walk in the mentor looking ass creature so he just swipes left on that joint i don't care how much i'm saving humanity because if my job was to swallow balls for a living i'm putting in those resignation papers asap now we have mappa out there with the angles again i mean they ain't even trying to hide it anymore yo that's that one chick with a dead ass haircut in the future so this was before she got done dirty by a barber okay and i know i have seen this face before but i can't say who it is let's just call her purple bitch for now and i know this is may so let's call her white bitch so they are sent here to check out this spooky mansion that looks like your average la residence they can't even get in because of all the plain garbage laying around i know the aftermath of a high school party if i ever seen one just kidding, I never got invited. So May gives Purple Bish a flashlight and then throws out this double-sided comment, Loki roasting her and now they split up. Of course we have to follow the incompetent one, searching in every place but the right one. So she makes it to the last room where these new folded clothes and some Air Maxes are laid out, but apparently them joints ain't her size, cause she goes straight for under the bed instead. <laughs> She got her whole shit rocked by a gang of rats. That's tough. So it seems like we're stuck in some infinite loop kind of deal. I wonder what the smartest course of action is. I'm not sure if this is working, girl. Shut up, we are almost out, trust me. We have been walking for three hours, gang. Yeah, instead of walking, she tried to run, and somehow that bullshit worked, and now we have our first interaction with young Gojo, as the first thing he does is bully homegirl while Loki rissing me up, god damn. Bitch, get off your high horse and fucking help me. Screw that little side piece, would you hold me if I was crying, baby? Ah ha ha, say less, baby girl. What? Now we have a new problem, as this cuphead boss emerges, but he gets about two seconds of screen time before a boy ghetto returns walking up the stairs feeling a little bit goofy i would assume it's a whole free v1 until nobora but not nobora shows up she turned low rest before she even got hugged i guess it's a 4v1 looks like someone forgot to do their job later all right who was the funky little bitch that forgot the veil there is no way this host just snitched on me, dog. Now these three are just goofing around in the gym while these two hot-headed motherfuckers get into some argument that almost ends the show early huh were you two about to kiss? So their mission is to murk this young orphan girl and give her to the lord and savior Tengen so he can become happy and not destroy the whole world. The only problem is that there are some cringe terrorist groups trying to let Tengen go wild. So we have this Power Rangers looking one which no one cares about and the second one being the star religious group who are the biggest meat monsters I have ever seen. Anyway, now they're heading over to kidnap her ass and bro, what is this? Gojo is walking without a care in the world while Gedo is having the posture of an average discord mod. Yup, yup, I'm heading up now. I Make sure you get those digits if she's bad, man. You know this girl is 14, right? If that ass is fat, you know where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? Bro? Before we even got a look at this girl, her ass got blown to the moon, probably dining with the queen right about now. But you know our boy Ghetto is locked in and splatoons the fucking window before dolphin diving out of the building, saving Shoddy on a flying fish? Oh, it's the lowest terrorists. Ah, they even trying to use knives against Gojo. Okay, this is a wrap. Meanwhile, we have Toji and his gang trying to get in on the action. And before we leave this episode, we just need to point out this neck and shin combo. Like, what is going on here? We start off with Ghetto having a nice cup of tea while absolutely violating this victim. And of course, Gojo clipped their strongest guy. And just like that, the whole group got put on a shirt in less than one episode. Meanwhile, Toji is wasting all his money on betting and gets all grumpy when pointed out. How's your kid doing, by the way? Who? So Shoddy wakes up, smacks the shit out of Gojo. <laughs> I had to show that twice. And get into her battle position, which doesn't seem to have any weakness. And then her maid pulls up riding on something I'm not even gonna try to explain, and then the situation becomes a little more stable. Apparently this girl is some kind of model student too, because after almost getting blown up, she wanna go back to school? So they do? Yeah, the two strongest people are not gonna play babysitters for one spoiled brat. Gojo, check if homegirl is still alive. Huh? It was not a fart.
Toji is still trying to take home that big win, but after losing one more time, he takes the job. Gedo claps some random old man while Gojo runs into a church full of underage girls, which is his biggest kryptonite as he just can't resist the urge to risk them all up. He manages to get one off H2, but he has no interest in that and kidnaps her ass again. Picks her up like a duffel bag, I would not take that personally. Now the maid get into some altercation with Bagface and hits the jackpot. Something Toji never could, but he only shadow clone type beat and joins Gojo instead. But he ends up disrespecting him while he explaining what he's doing step by step. Like this must be a war crime. Protect your head, shawty. Ah ha ha. Okay, what is that gonna do? Yeah, somehow the maid got kidnapped, so the gang decides to lock up Rico in some random alleyway. Oh no, the door is open, my bad. To be fair, I have no idea what's going on, because now everyone, including the maid, is on a vacation, laughing at this poor sea urchin. Well, we're having fun at least. What are we doing here? Wait. Ah, we finally made it inside the safe barriers of you used to high. Yeah, dog. I'm so dumb being a babysitter. Let me risk up her friends instead. Yeah, everyone is in fucking disbelief. There is no way a man of this size managed to sneak by everyone and shank the most overpowered guy in the whole show. Gojo is still chilling though, holding a whole normal conversation with Toji like it's an introduction in kindergarten. So apparently Gojo pissed him off as a child for looking at him weirdly, so he had to spin back 20 years later. Now Gedo and Gojo run this tag team on his ass with this huge caterpillar. Yo, you good? I'm fine, dog. This is nothing. I'ma just stretch a little while I slowly let out small cries of pain so no one notices. What? Get the girls to Tengen and I'll finish this man off. If you thought Toji's story would end like that, you're horribly mistaken as he makes his second dramatic appearance just for the fun of it. There is no one but this man that can look good being covered in purple alien shit with a purple alien shit around his shoulders. This is enough for Gojo to start sweating. Yeah, fuck all this talk. Homie pulls out the technique, but Toji ain't no pushover cause he been doing all this shit without a single drop of cursed energy. He come in quick too, pause, with that backhand grip, but Gojo still with it and does the no look fuck on my face that sends homie flying for two buildings and one house. Now he got Gojo shook one more time as he just ain't where he's supposed to be. This gorilla of a man is moving faster than the cameraman, we might have a bigger problem than we thought. So the only logical answer to this equation is to pull out the blue ball of death and just eradicate the whole school plus or more. He really fucking shit up, okay. But Toji pulled out his own ball of death in the form of these ugly ass flies that surround and blind homeboy. When I'm talking levels, I'm talking about Toji Fushigiro, dog. He managed to sneak by Blue Eyes twice in the same episode and not only that, this time he clips him right through his throat and then drags that shit through his body and ends it with a 360 leg sweep to the skull. This might be the biggest fold I have ever seen from a boy, what the fuck happened? Meanwhile, these three are on the way to sacrifice homegirl and after a heartfelt goodbye, Rico and Ghetto heads over to Tenga's place. You mean to tell me, after three episodes of bullshit to protect this brat, Ghetto drops the news that she can decide for herself if she wanna live or die? Damn, this might be my chance. So... Wanna fuck? Ew, no. Yeah, no, that's disgusting, you're right, you're right. I got Pringles though. Oh my god, that's the most romantic thing anyone have ever said to me. Yes, please take me with you. Oh my god. No way so that hard. shit worked. Alright, let's head back to my place, shorty. <laughs> yes. What the fuck? Toji is back with his blicky and has no time for these emotional speeches because he's still down 10k and there's a new race tonight. Oh, you mean Gojo? Yeah, I killed that hoe. Gedo ain't about to let his gang die without a get back, so he pulls out Shenron, but he just eats that shit. No homie must know his ass is grass, so he pulls out his squid minigun, but misses every single shot like an absolute bot. A whole lot of things is going on, like we have this big one-eyed ogre trying his best while Toji is flying, fucking up everything coming his way. Now a forced side quest appears with this girl trying to know if she's cute or not, but Toji don't give two fucks about that and just reacts her on the spot. Yeah, he almost lost one ear Mike Tyson style, but he just built different and shot that shit down. Gedo now thinking he got that dog in him, trying to steal the purple alien shit from homeboy, but that doesn't work and he ends up getting messed up part two. Toji finishes the job by marking him like Luffy. Who the fuck is Luffy? Toji finishes the job by marking him like Luffy, kicking him unnecessarily. So unnecessarily, I'm gonna play it three times in a loop, and then out of nowhere remembers that he got a kid. Oh yeah, that kid is mine, isn't he? Megumi. Why did I name him that? So he drops off the goods at the Star Religious Headquarters, and when walking back, he's faced with this happy ass looking dude. Just as I said in the beginning, this motherfucker is off the perk, totally lost in the ecstasy of life. Actually just explaining what taking shrooms feels like on prime television. Gojo now sunbathing, thinking about his next mixtape, mixes both his two colors and makes a big purple ball, and just casually makes Toji join the donut club. Any last words? You know Sagma? Sagma balls? Sagma balls, ha!
Oh, fuck. Well, goodbye. <laughs> this man really died standing up. That's crazy. <laughs>